Hey, welcome to Red Blue Labs. Today, I got an exciting topic about routing and switching between PFSense machines. <laughs> now, I know it's not a super exciting topic. But however, when we're setting up a home lab environment, we may want to consider the, the routing between different networks. That's what this is about. If you came to this video just to learn about switching and routing in PFSense, check out the chapters. They will be helpful for you. I'll say very specifically where you go and just jump to it and watch it. Enough preamble, let's get to the video. None of what we're gonna be doing here is gonna make any sense if we don't have some kind of visual idea of what we're building. So let's briefly go through how this network is set up. I've got two virtual machines. I've got one right here and one right here. This one is a Kali machine. This one is a Ubuntu machine. It doesn't really matter what the virtual machine is because they're going to be on completely separate networks, as we can see right here and right here. I've got two PFSense machines, PF here, and another PFSense machine right here. On our first PFSense machine, we have two interfaces. We've got our WAN and we have our LAN. On this side, we've got a, our second PFSense machine, and it has a WAN, it's got a LAN, and it also has an OPT1. On the LAN side of PFSense1 machine, we've got it set to DHCP, but it's also a internal network. Network is being defined by the PFSense itself. So we actually had to go and set this network up inside PFSense itself. I do have a video on how to set up a network. And we've got a very similar setup over here where it's just a different different class C class C network and it's a, a 1.0. This one's a 2.0. The piece that makes this unique is that we actually have this setup here where we have a host only where the IP address on these machines can be given out by the virtualization software itself. So I like to use host only in environments like this and sort of a lab environment. We all have an external IP address. So in this case, we have been given this one by DHCP and in our configurations, we actually set this one statically, but that's only because it was OPT one. If this was in fact a, a WAN interface, it would, it would actually have to be, uh, it could be a static, but it could also be a, a dynamic one that's given by your ISP. When we're doing static routing, and you're going to see that in a little bit here, it's it's imperative that you know the IP address of the receiving end. The tricky part about setting up routing in networking environments and home labs type stuff like this is that you have to wrap your mind around the fact that traffic is coming from somewhere and going somewhere else. And what are the natural stopping points of that traffic as it traverses across various networks. So what we're going to be doing here, and I'm going to, sh I'm going to show you the path that this traffic is going to be traveling. It's going to start here and it's going to go to our gateway, which is in this case 2.254. And so now the router has to decide, well, what are we going to do with this traffic? The user wants to, to leave. We have rules, firewall rules, set up here, and static routes. PFSense machine is going to determine where is this traffic going to go. So it has to tell it to travel along this path right here. It's not going to go right into here. It's going to go to the gateway, essentially, of this network. All this traffic is going to go over to this IP address. It's kind of like a doorway. What is the doorway into this particular environment? And in this case, it's 83.2. Once we've made it onto this particular machine, now this router has to determine what are we doing with the traffic that we have just received? Well, we are gonna learn in a bit here that the traffic is going to be going into this network and go to whatever machine is inside of this network. Additionally, 
we we may want to consider adding some back and forth between these networks. So we are going to actually set up a static rule on this router here that's going to allow traffic to come back. This next part's not super exciting. Fair warning. One thing I experience when I'm watching videos like this on YouTube is that people sort of, sort of tend to rip through the, the video in order to show the thing, but it's hard to know which machine is associated with which machine in the video and I end up end up going back and forth looking at the topology but like is that the machine so the next minute or so I'm gonna be doing that I've got my Kali and I'm, I'm positioning on the left side of the screen and it is this machine right here I've got my Ubuntu machine here and it is this VM right here I've got a PFSense, and I position it onto, onto the top left of the screen. It is this machine. And I've got a second PFSense machine, and it is actually this machine right here. There you go. <laughs> now you know which machines are associated with which machines in the topology. All right. Maybe you'd like to build something similar to this in your own home lab environment. In the next little bit here, I'm going to be showing the configurations of each of the virtual machines. We're going to start with the PFSense that was on the top left, machine and settings. And the key piece about this is we're going to be looking at the networking. So let's go over to networking and start with the first one. And so this is a host only network and it is the name is right there if you're curious about how to set that up there's a video on the screen that will show you how to set up host only networks inside of VirtualBox. okay so that's the first adapter the second adapter is called lan 2 that is this network right here where it says 192.168.2.254 and we have a OPT1, which in this case actually is nothing to do with the project. Okay, good. Internal network for LAN, host only for the WAN. Let's go over to PFSense that was on the right side. And we are going to be going to the machine, settings, and going to network and Let's take a look at the first adapter. That one is NAT. That's the, that's the network that's going to allow us to leave and go to the internet. Great. The second adapter is our internal network. This is important uh, because we are creating a network that's created by PFSense. And I've given it a name PF1. I could call it anything. It could be flip-flops and it would still function as long as another machine was on, on, was on the same internal flip-flop network and then our third one this is the host only adapter that is connected to the WAN on the other side okay so we can see the connection here OPT1 and WAN are on the same host only network now I'm going to go to the Kali which was in the bottom left look at the network networking for that settings network it's attached to the same internal network as the LAN of my PFSense very important it's not going to work <laughs> if it's not set up like that and then let's go to Ubuntu or the bottom right machine settings and go to network and it is attached to the same internal network of the LAN of the PFSense Let's go look at some of the particulars inside the Ubuntu machine. Take a look at my terminal here, and we're going to make note of the IP address that we have here, which is a 1.103. And let's look at the Kali. We're going to take a note of the IP address here, which is a 2.21. Let's get talking about the routing. So inside of the 
virtual machine Kali on the left side of the screen, I've opened up a, a browser and I've put in the gateway of my PFSense LAN network. Brings me to this screen. We're going to sign in and we're going to go look at the key pieces that we need to do in order to set up this routing. We're going to head over to system and go to routing. Now I've got it already set up, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what you're seeing on the screen here, but we do need to add a gateway. So go ahead and click on add, and then we're going to go into the configuration of that gateway that we are creating. The left side here, remember this is when we're going to be routing traffic on the WAN interface. I'm using an IPv4 and the name, you can give whatever your name you want. Give it something that makes sense. For me, I wanted to give it the name of routing. And then this is the key piece. There's really, unless you want to be particular, there's really nothing else left to do for this. We're going to set up the IP address of where this traffic is being sent to. Let's look again at the picture here. 83.2 is where this traffic is going to be routed to. So we're good with that. We save it. We're happy. Apply the changes. And it might seem like that's it. It's not just yet. We do need to set up a static route. So you can see it on your screen right here. We have our static route. Click on that. When you see it, it's going to be empty, but you're going to add that static route. So I've got mine here and I'm going to edit it. So we have to choose the proper gateway. Where am I going to be routing this traffic to? Now, remember, we just made this. So this is the, the gateway that I just made. Perfect. So select that. What is this machine going to do with the traffic that comes from here? Well, we want it to engage with this particular network. So we tell it, what is the destination network? In this particular case, it's a 192.168.1.0. Pick the appropriate uh, CIDR. In this case, it's a slash 24. For you, it will be whatever network you want it to be, wherever, whatever it's supposed to be. And that's it. Hit save, apply the changes. I've got the routing set up, but I want to also manage the traffic as it leaves my network. Okay. We know now that that would be dealt with firewall rules. Go to firewall, go to rules. And we are in the LAN network. And so you can see a few rules in here. Um, ones that are important in this particular test is actually this rule right here, second from the bottom. We've got a rule that says protocol of ICMP, good, in this network can send ICMP anywhere. That's what this rule here means. That's it. But we're not totally done yet because we do need to deal with this machine right here. We've already logged in to our PFSense machine on this side. And now I'd like to go and look at the firewall rules that are in here. Firewall, rules, and we're going to go to OPT1. Remember, this is the, the interface right here. OPT1, and in this particular case, I am allowing the traffic all in. If you want to set up different firewall rules, that's your prerogative. But right now, we're just sort of proving a point here that we can send traffic from one network and route it using static routes. Let's look at our gateway and static route for this. So remember, system, routing, and gateways, we made a gateway right here. The interface we're playing with is OPT1. 
I gave it the name of routing and we have an 83.10. That's important because it reflects this number right here. Traffic coming from here is going to get stopped at this point. So let's make sure we take care of that traffic as it reaches that point. And everything else is good. Let's go back to gateways and let's look at static routes. And you'll notice that things are very similar. It's just reversed. Here's the gateway that we made. And then the network that we want to play in is in the 2.0. Let's do a test. We've got the rules. We've got the static route set on both sides. Now we're ready to ping that IP address, which is the Ubuntu machine, and see what comes back. We can see right away that we've got some data that's coming back at us from the Ubuntu machine to the Kali machine. We've gone across that host only network and we used static routing to make this happen. On the screen, I've got a couple of other videos that I think you're going to like. Go ahead and give those a watch and we'll talk to you soon.